Yes. Talk about the jump from being a hairstylist from I'm charging like three, four hundred dollars for a color and cut to I'm charging two, three, four, five thousand dollars for a three hour service, four hour service. Walk us through how that jump happened for you, like what that was like for you. Of course, it was very frightening because I always thought, okay, if I make this jump, the number one, of course, at that time, I was like, everybody's going to talk shit about me. But number two, I was like, I'm going to lose everyone. I'm going to have no clients. And then there was the shift of the concept four quarters or a hundred pennies where it was like, okay, obviously we all know four twenty five cents or a hundred pennies. It's the same amount. So for my shift, it was like, even if I lose half the people and I'm doing half the amount, it would work out and I would be okay. But it was still scary and it's more scary, not necessarily the numbers, but at least for me, it was like, oh my gosh, people are going to judge me and they did and then now I, I mean now I don't care so when you first made the jump how did you make the jump because I want you guys to understand what they have to do in the hair industry is insanity which is these girls have all built successful businesses in hair they're making a hundred hundred fifty thousand maybe two hundred thousand a year but they're working six days a week and they're working 12 to 14 hours a day and they're working every holiday and they're working every Saturday and they're working all the fucking time this is what their world was. Plus, they're charging damn near nothing. Half people aren't tipping, and it's a low, low, low market price. So they come into our world, and we say, here's the plan. Ready? Burn your business. And you're like, what? And I'm like, burn your business. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. All of the cuts, color, style, ascensions, blowouts, all this other bullshit, toenail waxing, uh, guys' cuts, kids' cuts. Guess what? Fucking get rid of them. And this is how I talk to these girls this way. I didn't talk to them nice. The original OGs I trained in big money styles to train them like they're warrior guys. That's why all of those women and a man that came out of that group in that genre six years ago all went on to fucking crush the game. But you all made a jump. So you had to make a jump. What was the identity jump that had to change for you? The identity jump for me was because when we first went into class, we were drilled into our brain of we would go in a circle and it was, I am a marketer, I'm a closer, I'm a leader, not a savior. And I say, I would like, it was me thinking of that. So when I think of marketing, because I we would say, oh, I don't want to be a salesperson. I'm not a salesperson. I'm a marketer. When I close people, and it was that mindset of those three things, which is insane that all these years later, get, that you're telling us that same thing. But getting rid of everything and restarting all over, it was actually free. Yes. And then again, the concept of, I said, well, my favorite client can only come at night. Like that's my, my favorite client. And I'd make up the excuse and... It was Val who told me, she's like, so are you telling me that your favorite client is more important than Lucas Scott? I was like, okay, you're right. No, I'm not working nights anymore. Yeah, it's this mindset shift mm -hmm. of, and actually what's insane is by getting rid of all the noise and the bullshit, and you're just doing, again, the four quarters instead of a hundred pennies, you are unstoppable. And your work is literally so much better. My girls even have a hard time realizing, so we do two clients a day, three days a week. So we do six clients. So like we service like 36 people tops. I don't let my girls take more than that. And people get in scarcity. Oh my gosh, if I don't have all these people, I'm not going to make money. It's like, no, 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 no. Even if it's the same price, if you put more effort towards people, their tickets are higher, but it was a mindset shift. And it started with the three things of I'm a marketer. I'm a closer. I'm a leader, not a savior. Guys, I've been teaching the same shit for like, 10 years and everybody gets it blows up, but there's a transitionary time to it because what we're dealing with is a shift in identity, right? What was it like for you with money when you go from a service that was, you know, $400 to a service that was $3,000? I first was intimidated, but what made me have more confidence is that I paid for it. So I would fly down to DKW to get my hair done to pay for it because then if I knew I was paying for it, then I have so much more certainty within myself to pay for that. And that's why even like charging with coaching, I feel like, oh yeah, no, like I will pay for this, no big deal. So then I feel more confident with it. Cause sometimes it would be like, we'd get on the phone and be like, all right, that's gonna be $3,500. And you'd get like a little bit softer, but unless you are paying that. So even all my, my stylists at my salon, even me, myself and I, I own the salon. If I'm ever on the books, we're all paying full price. So I breed them from the get go because you have to be able to pay to play because you will not have that certainty and you won't have that confidence if you will not pay for it, but then you expect other people to. Beautifully done.